Hello. In this video, we are going to take a look at uh, another version of the active peak detector, uh, which overcomes some of the limitations of the version that we have seen in the previous video. Um, I have redrawn the active peak detector that we have previously looked at, just for comparison. Um, and then next to it is the new active peak detector uh, I've labeled with isolation. And the additional piece is that notice that now there is a another a second op amp connected uh, to that capacitor, and so we're going to see that the operation uh, is is fairly similar. Uh, the load resistor, obviously, in this case, will be connected to the output of the op amp right here. So there will be some isolation there. That will be my load resistor. Um, so let's start with the analysis. Let's look at the positive half cycle of my input signal first and then the negative half cycle. So for my positive half cycle, uh, notice that since my input signal is applied to the positive input terminal of the op amp, the output of my op amp, which I haven't labeled, but I'm going to label V out prime for consistency. Uh, v out prime is, is going to trend towards positive voltages, which means uh, diode D2 is going to be forward biased and diode D1 is going to be reverse biased. And so uh, V out prime greater than zero, which means D1 is what we have referred to as off, reverse bias, and D2 is the one that's on or forward bias. And the four, uh, I'm going to just cross D1 so that we can picture it better. And the four, what's going to happen is that uh, Capacitor C is going to charge uh, through D2. And uh, because I have that second op amp there, the other terminal of my op amp, the inverting input terminal of my op amp, is going to also charge to the same value as C and complete that negative feedback path uh, back to the first op amp. And because of the negative feedback operation, those op amps are going to try to operate uh, so that those. Uh, both input terminals are sitting at the same voltage, and so uh, what's going to happen is that C is going to be charging to V in, because remember, the, the negative input of that first op amp is going to be feeding back into the positive negative input of the first op amp, uh, and so it's going to want to charge this value to V in through that negative feedback operation, because that's the value I have on that other terminal. So if this terminal is sitting at V in, then that means my capacitor is sitting at, at V in, uh, which means V out prime is sitting at V in plus 0.7 volts, because that's what the capacitor has to do in order to, um, to uh, keep the negative loop operating happily. So C is charging to V in. It's uh, going to actually charge to the maximum value of V in, and um, and so V out then is going to be equal to my, my maximum value of V in. For V in less than zero, negative values of V in, the output of the top amp is going to try, try to go negative, and therefore the diode that is going to be forward biased now is going to be D2, so D1 is uh, on, excuse me, D1 is going to be forward bias because VL prime is trending negative, D2 is off, and if I can redraw what happens here in terms of voltages, uh, remember V in, uh, our, our capacitor was sitting at the voltage of, of V in, now D2 is reverse bias, so this is as if it wasn't here. an open circuit, uh, but the negative feedback path is still complete um, through diode D1. So essentially V out prime is going to go negative, uh, but the, the first top amp is going to try to operate so that both its input terminals are sitting at the same voltage because it has a negative feedback path through D1. And so that means that V out uh, prime is going to be equal to V in minus 0.7 volts, so that the other um, negative input terminal of the op amp is sitting at V in. Uh, 
Now my capacitor C was charged to V in and now that my diode D2 is turned off, it has basically no discharge path because on the other side it has, the one side it has a, a reverse bias diode and on the other side it has a, a high value of input resistance. Um, and so ideally there's no current that goes into the input terminal of, of an op-amp. And therefore it just sits there at that, at that V in value. And because it has negative feedback, the other terminal is also sitting at the value of V in. And therefore uh, C remains charged. So my V out is still equal to my maximum V in. Now in all reality, C is not going to just stay charged because uh, even if the diode has a small reverse leakage current, it does have some, some reverse leakage current. And uh, same thing for the op-amp, the input resistance is close to infinite or ideally infinite, but, but in reality, in practical cases, it's going to have some finite value. And so if you, if you leave the circuit um, on for a long time, it will eventually discharge, but it's going to do so much more slowly than the previous versions because of the isolation. Another advantage of the circuit with respect to the previous version is that notice that now you have a buffering stage, so your load resistance is connected after that buffer. And so um, adding or subtracting load resistance to your circuit is not going to affect the time constant for your circuit as in the previous case. So those are some of the um, advantages of the circuit configuration. And so what we are expecting to get if Let's say this is my input signal with respect to time. For example, what I would expect to get for my output is something that is much more able of uh, holding that peak value for my input signal. Now, with some discharge again, but not as much as the previous case. We can point to some of the advantages of this circuit with respect to uh, previous versions of a big detector. And of course, one of the main advantages is uh, that it still has the precision um, characteristic of the active version of the big detector circuit because it has that uh, open compensating for those diode drops. Um, it has uh, slower discharge, uh, and therefore, perhaps I should say longer holding time. For your input value, because again, it cannot discharge so easily. Um, once the capacitor is charged to the peak value. And also notice that it is a, uh, a non saturating A version of the circuit, meaning uh, either the, the negative feedback loop is never open in the circuit, it's never broken, uh, during half of the cycle D2 is, is on and so the negative feedback loop is closed through D2 and then the second op-amp. Uh, in, in for negative input signals, then the feedback loop is closed through diode D1. So the op-amp never goes into saturation. Uh, and therefore it just means that it can operate at uh, higher frequencies than a saturating counterpart. Uh, we still are limited in terms of constraining our circuits in the sense that that capacitor, even though slowly, it will discharge uh, eventually. And so we do want, we still want our time constant for the circuit, uh, which is equal to RC in this case, the equivalent resistance seen by that capacitor is going to be the input resistance of the op-amp. We still that want uh, the discharge time to be much longer than the period of the input signal. And so tau much greater than uh, the input period Ti. Thank you.